Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, I'm talking with Alistair Hutton of Everscapes. Everscapes is a landscape design and construction company and also pool builder through their sister company, Infinity Pools, in Queensland, in Brisbane specifically. And quite a good chat with Alistair, I reckon. I talked to Alistair about uh, how he started out in the industry and he was uh, learning as he went on the job, so taking on tasks which pushed his boundaries a little bit more and a little bit more. And we also talk about how he grew the business. So the biggest thing he had to stop doing was micromanaging. So that's something that a lot of people will be familiar with. And I thought it was interesting the way Alistair mentioned how with the boom that the landscaping industry is going through at the moment, how he's handled that with the pool side of things because pool building, uh, you're getting a lot of subcontractors and because they're hard to find at the moment, rather than taking on all the work that's coming on and saying yes to everything and then possibly having a bad result if you can't do a job on time, they've actually stopped taking on work for pool building because they can't get subcontractors reliably. So they're rather than taking that work on, they're protecting their reputation. So I thought that was an interesting way to go about things and quite a wise decision. So hopefully you enjoy this chat with Alistair Hutton. Alistair, thank you very much for joining us on the Landscaping Podcast. So the first question I've got for you is how it all started for you and where you started in the industry. I uh, started like most people in horticulture. So uh, I was uh, I was at uni and my partner fell pregnant at the time. So um, and while I was at uni, I was working for my brother who had a horticultural company in the Sunshine Coast. So I'll do a couple of days there and and my parents' farm, we, we uh, converted five acres of a wheat farm into gardens. So I guess um, I've always had a passion for nature and gardening. Even as a kid, I used to go walk about, you know, because we were out in the bush and I used to go basically bush for, for a whole day and come back at night. Um, so I've always, always done that, always had a kind of strong connection with nature and plants. So um, obviously, you know, when my partner got pregnant, I'm like, right, time to grow up and time to, to make a business. So I think I was just uh, at St. Lucia and I started handing out leaflets and I didn't even have a, a ute at the time. I had a, an old uh, XF uh, uh, sedan and it was that bad. I, I couldn't open the driver's door. It used to bellow out smoke. And, and But I, I invested in good equipment. I got a self-propelled Honda and Shindali gear and you know, I used to fold it all up on the back of the car and I was that ashamed of the car. I used to actually park the car a good 100 metres up and wheel everything down. Um, <laughs> I didn't want the client to see it. So, uh, but yeah, young, young, I think I was just so naive at the time. But it wasn't like maybe a couple of years later, I was ended up doing some of the best gardens in Brisbane, you know, and it was uh, it was really good. And and um, I had one client was like paying me $1,500 uh, for like a day's work, and I'm like, I'm 22. This is this is unreal, you know. So, you know, it's, it was it was bloody, it was gold, you know. I'm like, yeah, this is unreal, you know. This is good, and uh, I think for me, you know, to start doing some really great gardens. I think um, when you surround yourself with good design and good nature, and, and it gets ingrained in your subconscious. So, it was probably like a few years later, I'd walk into a blank canvas, and you just start to see all these images start forming you know and you just go oh you know i can i can see all this now and the plants like a language so it's uh it's all it all comes together and you go well i better go study design so and uh study design and um i think i just used i learned how to use autocad or autodesk at the time and and then i just didn't even finish the course i literally just went out and, and started this company and uh, got my builder's license in structural landscaping and build building yeah, where we went and turned into like a $4 million, $5 million um, business landscaping company where we're doing only high-end residential. We design everything ourselves. And um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride the last 19 years, actually, Joel. So it's uh, cool. been a fun little adventure of obviously that's a, a snip, like a little snapshot of what uh, we've done in that time. But, um, but yeah, we've had great staff, you know, people that, that really make the business in those timelines. They come in and you learn from them, they learn from you. Uh, so it's just that progression that, you know, people go through and it's, it's, uh, it's been, been fun. It's been, it's been fun. And obviously you have the duality and ups and downs of business as we all do, but it's about, you know, how you, how you strive through those times, you know, through the good times 
as well as the uh, the difficult or challenging times. Yeah. So back back at the start when you you probably had your equipment was probably more valuable than the car that you were keeping it in. But um, so were you doing much construction then, or was it maintenance to start with, and then did it just gradually evolve into construction? Yeah, it was. It was always the intention to do landscaping because I, I I really wanted that. But I, horticulture was the way in for myself. So um, clients would just ask me, "Hey, can you build this or can you do this?" And I'm like, "I have no idea," but I'm like, "Sure." Like, if someone else can build it, yeah, hundred percent. You know, like it was just being completely naive and confident and cocky, I guess. And um, it, it seemed to work. And I think, yeah, confidence is key and you can walk into a place and you say, yeah, we've got this, you know, this, this, we can do this, yeah, for sure. And then you just back up your promise, so you promise something, you deliver. It's, it's a very simple strategy. I mean, any, anyone in business, you know, say something, do, do it, you know, pretty much it. Yeah, mm. yeah I love that yeah, mindset. How, always ask them. What's that, sorry? I love that mindset because some people aren't a fan, like basically... It's, it's kind of like making it up as you go or learning as you go. There's there's a point where mm. yeah, you need to know your limits and not take on too much, but that's the best way of Correct. learning is actually doing something and pushing your boundaries all the time. Um, but I love that yes. you've done that. Yeah, it does it does cost you more money in the end, yeah. um, but it, 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 uh, it you learn so many. Of the, yeah, I guess there is no mistakes. There's only lessons in life. And if you learn, learn live by that, you know, you're fine. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, I think just get in and enjoy life and have, have a crack at it, you know? No point in saying, oh, what if, or, you know, you know, maybe once I do this, then if this, this, and this, then I'll do this, you know? It's about, you know, we're living now, so let's just jump in and, and see how we go, you know? That's, that's it, you know? It's one life as far as we know, so, you know, it's, um, may as well jump in, yeah, do, do it, yeah. get stuff done and have fun. And, yeah. Now, when you did the design, were you uh, doing construction while you were learning as well? Like, were you, were you doing work while you were studying uh, yeah, design? Yeah, I was doing everything, construction and design at the same time. So, um, yeah, I just literally, as I said, I'd walk into a place and it started evolving. I'd start, as clients were talking, you'd see a hundred different images start forming at, well, at once. I've always been a very visual person. So, um, you just get very... I guess, good at it as, 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 you, as you listen and you really have to listen to the client and you have to pick up on their, their personality, you know, and you're dealing with a husband and wife and then you go, okay, you know, there's certain languages they use, you know, you have to pick up on, you know, and pro, almost profile them. Okay, okay, so you're more structured, you're more organic, you know, how do we combine this so that it's a, it's a mirror? And most couples aren't that far off, but they can't articulate what they want from the design. So it's really coming there and it's like you get it to an hour where you just go okay i've got you and i understand you and i've, I've listened to both and and this is the vision that we're seeing you know this is how it's coming together and it's not just seeing like i guess a vision you've got to see everything you've got to see how balanced it is you know like because you, you have i've had it so many times where clients are going oh Alistair, i really want you to see this job we spent 120,000 on this pool renovation you go and have a look and you just go yeah, the workmanship's really great, you know, great stone. But I think you don't say that it's completely out of balance. You know, the design is, is, is no good. It's, it doesn't feel good. And I think that's, that's the thing. It's, you've got to be able to walk in. You've got to be able to see it. And you've got to see every element of it. But you've got to, it's got to feel good as well. And when I talk about the feeling, so I've always been had the gift of vision of seeing things. But I guess in the last three years, you've been able to feel what it feels like or feel that. The land has like an energy. So if you walk the land, like it's it's really nice to actually walk the land. In some places are really strong and you go, oh yeah, we're going to spend $100,000 on entertaining here because it feels good here. It's like you go to a resort and you go, I'm going to chill out on that day bed for the whole day. Don't disturb me. And you go sit there for five minutes and you know what? I don't like this spot. I'm going to go move over to this day bed. Oh, this feels much better. So subconsciously, we all can do it, but just how well you tune yourself and your body to actually recognizing that. So it's about walking into a site and visualizing it, but then feeling what that feels like before you do it. So as you're visualizing, you're sort of seeing how they're using, you're seeing the kids running around, you see them barbecuing over here, you see them doing that. So it's, it's not just visualizing, but seeing how everything interacts with each other, how balanced it is. And it's just, it's something I think, visually 
you either have, and that's why a lot of people are drawn to design. They can visualize, they can see it, they get it, you know, like it's like every, everyone, you know, they, they're they good at what they do, you know, that's their genius. And it's really important that you find your genius or your purpose in life. Mine was, mine was easy. Mine was to reconnect people with nature, you know, through landscape architecture. So um, that that's always been the goal, you know, so obviously everyone feels good when you go go out for bushwalk or you go go to nature, you come back, oh yeah, I feel good. You went for this hike and, you know, and it's like, well, of course, because plants are living organisms. They're alive, you know, like a pet, you know, they're, they make you feel good. Same with plants. So, you know, it's so funny. You go to a consult and you go, oh, Alistair, I love this spot, you know, and I just love sitting here. I'm like, well, look behind you. There's a great big tree. Of course you feel bloody good sitting in this spot, you know? So, you know, it's just, it's just simple things that we, we all know, but we, no one really talks about, no one actually acknowledges enough about what, how plants and nature actually can heal us or really help us feel good. Um, and it's uh, obviously, if you think about it, right? Um, 200 years ago, did we live in this concrete jungle? Did we live like this? We didn't. We lived more connected to nature, more around by nature. And it's in a, it's primal. It's primal for us to be surrounded by nature, plants, and jungles. So um, that's why if you can't get there, let's try and bring nature to uh, to the homes of people. So I think that's all what we try to, to do um, in a way. It just depends on, on how you want to articulate that or or understand your why or your purpose, I guess, is the is the fundamental thing of, of what we're doing. Yeah, and I, um, I recognise when you said it, we're saying it as well that you either got the talent or you don't. Because I, I, I spoke with Steve Taylor about that, about you, like you, the fact that you're able to see all the plants and everything as you go. Whereas I can, I can see that the one out of every twelve jobs, I'll see everything. But and the, the other ones, I need to go away and think about it more. And that's um, you've either got, yeah, that's you've either got the talent or you don't. Uh, and it's something you can probably uh, learn gradually. But um, yeah, it's good. It's good that that's your passion as well that you and 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 your ability. Yeah, I mean, it's about the only thing that I'm good at. The rest is pretty average. But that's one <laughs> one good thing that yeah, you focus on your genius, and then the other people you got you got gifted people in, in our company that you know, and we really create something special by the end of it. You know, as a, as a team, as a collective. Yeah, and the way and like you said before, that you get other people in, and you learn, they learn from you, and you learn from them as well. So you've all got your strengths and help each other out and work towards the goal. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like yeah, in like yeah, have nineteen years of knowledge, and these guys have got. You know, 20 and they got 15 and they got five and then you get the young guys with the drive and the hunger, you know, they just, you know, I love seeing them because they come through with this, this, this drive and this hunger to learn. You're like, great. I'd rather choose you over someone that's highly skilled with a poor attitude. You know, I'll take that guy, that guy any day. Um, so, you know, it's, it's picking your personality, your team, your culture, you know, how well they work together. Because if you're, um, when you don't have that culture, your, your company is not flowing. It's a struggle and it's a, it's a, it's a shit fight. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone loses. Like you, no one enjoys going to a job like that. The clients, it's not a good result for the client. Yeah. I agree. Uh, what stage did you put on your first employee? Um, I always had about, well, it wasn't long, probably six months or something like that. We went to three. I think we, we grew by 30% every year for a while. And then, uh, the hard thing was me, for me, I used to micromanage a lot, you know, you know, you had this stupid belief that, you know, no one could do it better than what you could do it. And if I went away, then there'll be a mistake, you know, and, you know, and that would cost us money and the young family you can't afford that. And, and then it wasn't until um, I used to try a new builder in the, in, from England and uh, I, I knew he was a way better tradesperson than I was. And I'm like, all right, well, let's get you over. And so I sponsored him over. And so that was my my next level up where I actually could trust someone to actually take over that. And then I learned to trust one, I learned to trust another, and then everything was working. I'm like, great, this is this is good, you know. Then then the business expanded, you know, like um, you know, you do have to let go of certain things because it's 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 you know never gonna be a certain way, but it's just having to let go and 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 you know, you know, lower those expectations and you just learn to go, well, you know, it is, it is what it is. You know, you just got to go with it. You know, maybe that line wasn't as, you know, as exactly as I wanted it, but like, well, you know, that was off by 50 mil, but that's just a little design, little things that no one really would pick it up. But 
there is certain things when you look at a design, there's, you don't understand it, but there's these little areas of these little things that might only just be, they might seem so small, but they're so big in the whole balance of the design. So that's why I guess I was very pedantic. Uh, start like now, like I'll look at it, I'm like, look, that doesn't really affect the whole design. Let's leave it, you know? So there's, there's got to be a, you know, give and take and, and also let go and sort of, you know, it's okay. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, I'm in that stage at the moment trying to gradually do that because you can't, like you say, you can't do it forever micromanaging. It's not beneficial for anyone either. Um, and yeah, there's things I'll pick up and say, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it this way, but yeah, the end result is the same, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And uh, other than that, you go bored very quickly, so there's no point uh, in stressing all your life. So number one killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably is. Um, and you mentioned you got your building license for the structural landscaping. So I, just, I spoke with Taylor Luke a while ago, and um, he said there's two different licenses. So have you got the one that's harder to get or more involved in getting? Is that yeah? Is that so I've got the trade uh, as well as builder restriction restricted, and then uh, yeah. also to uh, swimming pools as well. So we've got Everscapes and the Infinity Pool Builders. At the moment, we've actually stopped building pools for the next sort of six months because. We made that decision. We looked at it and go, well, we're not going to be able to get subcontractors. They're just, it's just a boom in pools. So we made that conscious decision where we're just going to focus on landscaping until things settle down because otherwise you're just going to wreck your brand, your, your name, um, by not delivering on what you promised. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really more challenging now. Yeah, we're in a building boom, but, geez, you know, like how, how do you capitalise on that building boom? You know, how do you get your flow in a business? How do you get your efficiencies? You know, when, when your material doesn't arrive on time, when, you're, when you, you can't get your contractors right, and when, you, when the clients are now like you're two months over, over on time because you just things aren't flowing like how they used to. So, you know, it's managing the expectation and then you want, to have a, you want to have happy money. So you want to receive money that is happy from a client, you know what I mean, in, in a way. But if they've taken, you know, from three months to five months, you know, they're going to have resentment. So it's really hard to manage and you have to look at, well, you know, even for myself, I've, I jumped back on the tools for the last five months. And, and that was, that was so much fun because you just, you couldn't, you needed more trades. And we were literally, we were busting jobs out, like probably, you know, jobs that would take probably two months and three weeks. It was running really good. We were like rolling around laughing half the time because we were just, just having so much fun with the boys. I love getting back on the tools of the boys, you know, it was, it was so much fun. And it was really like building, you know, the culture and you could feel the, the shift in dynamic just for myself coming back. Because we, we were at 26 sort of employees and we're just going, you know what, let's make life a bit more fun and easy. And we went down to 13 and it's just been a joy. You know, it's been, it's been a lot more uh, crazy and, and, and friendly and the clients are happy. You know, you're not dealing with, you're not dealing with staff and being an HR manager. You're actually getting in and doing the, your purpose you're getting in there and, and building cool shit and um getting stuff done and and you're walking away with the results and you, you know as a creator you look back and you just when you build something cool and you go you walk away but you keep looking back you keep looking back you keep looking back and you go yeah well you know that looks good when you just keep you keep turning your head every two seconds just to have another little glance at the, the, the end results so you know i think that's that's good to remember those those things after you know 19 years and then get back with the boys and and um, help build stuff, you know, that's, that's what it's about, you know. So, it's, um, yeah, it's some of the best times we've had is, uh, yeah, coming together and, you know, you building that team, that, that bond with the guys and, you know, they know everything about you and you know everything about them. You know, there is no, there is no secrets, there's no things you just they know your life inside out and you know them, you know, that's, that's the way it should be, you know, between a boss and employees, it should be, you know, that relationship and, and you, know, you know, like it was hard as well because, we, we lost a bit of money on pools at the start of the year. So we're in the hole like 400,000. So we had to dig ourselves out. And they're like soldiers, man. They just got in and they just knuckled out, you know, like bust to their balls. And, you know, like I just like my hat goes off to those guys because they just, you know, when you ask for something from them, they just they just dug deep. You know, it was, it was awesome to see. And, you know, like we're getting our, you know, they're trying to get poached every sort of two or three weeks. Every couple of weeks, there's someone's calling out and say, oh, you want a job? But they're happy. They don't want to go, you know, like they're not asking for more money. They're just going, look, we're happy here. We want to stay. 
And I'm like, mate, that's that's exactly where you want the business to be, especially now when you know everyone's resigning at a drop of a hat everywhere else. So you're not going to get any flow. You can't build stuff. And I've got mates that are builders that call me up and just go, Alistair, we're we're going to wind up for six months because we just can't get, we can't build, and we're not making money, and clients aren't happy. So they go, how's this a boom when we uh, aren't making money? You know. So it, there are challenges, but you just have to think, of, well, not, well, we can't do this. How do we do this? You know, ask yourself in a different mentality. Of, okay, well, okay, well, maybe, maybe we'll just focus on the things that we can control. Can we control subbies? No. So at the moment we go, well, we're going to exclude all this and focus on the things that we are good at to make our life easier and our business easier and then put that responsibility back on the client and um, not deliver, I guess, that all in one package like we used to, but deliver a great result at the niche thing that we can do really well, which is is always landscaping. And we've got the skill set from the guys to do that. So, you know, you, it's always going to be hard, I guess, with tilers and tradies and blockies, but most of that stuff we can we can do, but it's not, not as quick as those, those other guys. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much where we're at currently. And, and um, yeah, it's been, been a fun ride at the moment. Yeah. So it's good. That sounds, sounds like a smart way to do it because it can be very tempting for anyone who's got a lot of work coming in to take on everything to say yes because they're going to make a lot of money. But Blair, the, the, what, what you've done is really smart in terms of not doing the pool so that, so that you can actually, when you do a job, doing a great result so the client's happy, like you said, because, so, yeah, pretty easy to get tempted and then you can ruin your reputation. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, like, you know, like we had a couple of pools that were badly supervised, you know, and, and you know, they're, they're, you know, I'm talking a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollar pools, you know, and they're not cheap to rectify concrete, you know? So you, in a, when you grow to a point, you can only be, you know, one person only just takes one supervisor to fall off the rails or have some stress in their life. And, you know, it just they 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 fall they fall off from what they used to be, you know. So, you know, and those things can really hurt you. And it's hard to sort of be in someone's mindset all the time and understand them. But I guess and that's what happens when you're a big company, you know, you you lose you lose those little values, you lose those closer connections because you're just running around. So I I find that yeah, we're not doing as probably the bigger turnovers like we are, but we're making more profit. And that's at the end of the day, that's what it's about is making, you know, more profit and, and, and enjoying your life. You know, I want to I want to be able not to work all the time. I'm the surf. I want to jump on the ski and go to South Australia and surf, you know, like that that for me is living, you know, same, same time with the family, you know, like when I can not just be a slave to, a you know, a business, you know, like you, that's that's the whole idea. And I think a lot of people in the construction space, because Construction is more challenging. I find it probably one of the more challenging businesses out there. And then you're dealing with clients as well. Then there's a, there's a, a very big mistrust between clients and trades. You know, like, so tradesperson will be ripped off by clients and then customers are being ripped off by trades. So it's like, how do you, how do you, how do you win them back that? And I think it's a, it comes down to sort of, you know, us really owning it and just going, guys, you know, what we're doing actually is pretty cool. We're, we're going to the clients, have trust and faith that we're going to, you pay us and we're going to come back. And we, when the clients pay us, we'll come back and I'll just tell the guys anything they want. Just, you know, we've got to show them that that there is faith in trades and then, then we're going to do the right thing. So by doing it and just like two weeks, we're going to have all these little things done. Boom, 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 boom. And then we get them done and then it just, it builds, it builds this trust. You know what I mean? Even if there's always going to be a couple of challenges, how you deal with those things, right? But the thing is that at the end of the day, if they're going and paid you all the money, it's like the last last amount might be like two grand or three grand or whatever it is. And and you come back and you just deliver and then and then exceed those expectations in the end. It just they the trust and then the reviews you get are phenomenal because you've delivered on that bit and they've been broken before, and what you're doing is restoring that faith. That, that that not all trades people are like that. So I think, you know, as a collective, as a landscaper, we should try and aim to be, you know, a, a better a better sort of trade and, and build that trust with, with clients as well. Um, because, yeah, you know, I've, I've we've all been burnt by clients as well. Like I've had clients that have been like amazing and friendly and great and you trust them and, and then you do everything perfectly and it's 100% and they're like, no, nah, mate, we're, um, we're going to pay up, you know, it's like, 
or you know, do you, do you waste all your negative energy trying to fight that? And it's going to cost you more and absorb all your time and create more stress. Or you just have to let it go. You know, you have to let it go. And these guys know this. You know, they, they do it all the time. They do it probably more often than you probably think. Um, so you just got to understand it. And, and it's really trying to pick your client at the start. So I do consults now. And if I'm not, if my gut doesn't feel right, I'll go, look, sorry, this is not working out. I'm going to refund you the consultation and I'm going, you know, because as soon as every time I've done, I've done before where a client has said, look, I'm just really stressed at the moment. The builder, you know, causing me a lot of stress and um, yeah, I'm just not in a good place. I'm like, look, you're going to have to, you know, with that because you're going to give that to the guys. I'm saying, who's the leader on the job? Is it, is it myself or is it you? I'm so at the end of the day, it's, it's your, you're the person in control. You're the client. So if you're on the site and we're on the site at the same time, and if there's stress and you're, you are a leader, that stress is going to filter through everyone. And then what happens if there's stress on a job, Joel? What happens? Yeah, you get lots of problems. Yeah. You get lots of problems. And it's like these people attract these problems, you know, to themselves because they're living in this habit of stress and, and negative, negative energy that just, so, you know, as soon as I feel that, I'm out the door. Like, I'm really trying to pick, you know, other good people to work with and that hold the same values that we do and our team do, you know. So that's being a really good one too is holding your own. And just, um, and another thing we do as well, as well as that, we have a motto at Everscapes that we tell the truth no matter what. Like, we don't say, oh, shit, you know, like, like we had a job the other day and there was a variation done and they extended the tiles, but we ordered the tiles from the original contract. You know what I mean? So we were like nine square meters short. And can we get these tiles? No, 30 days delay. I'm like, you know what? And the guys are like, oh, just, just, just wait a few days, you know, wait a few days and see if we can pull off a miracle. It's like, nah, you've got to tell the truth. You've got to tell the truth. And in the end, we found the tiles, but obviously they cut it from a different quarry the same tile but you know, different different batch so it ended up working great because the one section was exactly the amount we needed so it, it didn't matter but we just i went and saw the client say look this has happened what well, this is why it's happened and you know what you're doing you're building trust and rapport with the client so they believe you so i'm saying if you kill the you know, the client's dog you have to own it you know you have to you have to admit the truth and uh, you know tell the boys you know the truth sets you free all the time so it's really important to um, to live live by that with the clients and not not tell like a little porky, oh, this happened because of this, you know, that's what happens like that. It's like, no, you've got to build that trust and earn that trust. Yeah, and it, I find that the clients actually appreciate it more than if you didn't do anything, than like, if you do something wrong and tell them, it's almost like they're happier that you've actually told them and that they can trust you then. Because uh, it's so easy to stand out above the, you know, your standard trading. Like I always tell people I don't like, uh, this being classified as a stereotypical trader because of the of that reputation of you know not turning up on time or um, not turning up at all. But there's a lot of times we'll turn up to a quote and the clients are surprised that we're actually there so quick and on time. So yeah, it's so easy just to stand out above the crowd um, and yeah, and build that yep. trust, like you say. Now you mentioned uh, you have got 26 staff before. What sort of breakdown is that in terms of design and construction and? Oh, it's a good question. It was, it was around about you know, four designers. And then we had poolside, we had the guy running sales as well as um, project managers and construction manager in the pools. And then we had five teams of two in foreman and then, and then apprentices. We, we found that the teams of two to three were working the best. It took a bit longer, but the data was showing that the labor rates are better because if you have four guys, you may have you know two guys just staying on a shovel a little bit more and leaning on the other guys. So... The data that we tracked and worked for Max for like five years was, was really showing us that most efficiencies were around two, never one, um, and then maybe three. On the big days of soft landscaping, that's when we get the crews together and really nail that out and that brings back the team and the culture, um, those points there. But in construction, um, we found the efficiencies with, with a skilled foreman and an apprentice, the guys that we trained through. And, and we, were, we were being very good you know in the last 19 years of and that's a funny thing we didn't realize at the time but we were training some of the best landscapers in brisbane because um we never used to subcontract anything we used to build it all 
And I didn't realize, and then you start putting you know, guys up for apprentice of, for, uh, apprentice of the year and they're winning it, you know, at the time. And, and then you're looking at the skill set, and then you start getting the commercial landscapers coming over, and they don't know how to build much. They don't physically know how to build the complex structures and all these these things that we do because some of the, the designs we do are pretty out there. You know, they're not easy, simple things to, to build. And I think the first thing is um, the guys say to me, it's like, oh, I don't know, I was, I was designed how many curves are in it, you know, this time, you know, like, you know, like, you know, it's a complexity of it. So by doing it though, you, you're building a more, your skill set's growing, you're learning because you're expanding, you know, you're not just doing the mundane and the repetitive uh, nature by you're doing something more boutique and, and different and then you know you gotta obviously the first thing you're doing is what are we creating what are we creating and why are we doing it for fine then you know the second one is when you do it it's like how, is how much is it going to cost and how are we going to build the damn thing you know these are these are things that you got normally got to work out and some of the some of the, the stuff that we do you know we, we have to work out how to build it and i always say look you can draw it you can build it um and that helps a lot too so we find that's a really good attitude to have. Yeah, if you can model it, you can draw it, you can you can you can just sort of break it down piece by piece and, and work out how the how. Have you got a business coach or anything? Or because you seem like you're running a pretty complex kind of business, like not not anyone could run that size of business. Do you have any anyone you lean on for help? Yeah, I had a, 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 business, a business coach. Um, I'm still actually working with them and, and mentoring a few other people for coming through that. A bit, um, and um, there's some work with uh, Trevor Hindi actually. I mean, the Iron Man. Yeah, he's a yeah, he's a really he's an amazing guy actually. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, been working with Leegans from Million Dollar Business Club. He's a very good coach, um, and he he looks he looks at things differently. So he looks at you know like okay, well in business you have to be clear, and you have to hold your emotional state because as soon as you lose your emotional state you lose um in any any field with your workers because they look up to you and you know it's like, like as soon as you go Burr! they're like oh where did that come from you know like oh i didn't like that you know so it's about being balanced you're talking to someone but you're delivering it's like it's like you need presence as a leader or a foreman on site you need to walk in there like own it but you don't you don't want to be the it's the new age of, of masculine it's not the the old age where you're a prick it's you're coming in with presence and you're holding your space and you're not getting, you're not yelling at people. You're just articulating yourself calmly, rationally, and consciously about what you're saying, what you need to deliver, and why you need to deliver. We need to do this because of this, this, and this. You know, that word because is a great word because you actually explain the why. Um, so, yeah, there, there are good things about having a business coach. And for me, um, meditation was, was one thing that he really got me into heavily and, um, you know, I did a lot of work with Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, and then I studied um, some more no-system, which is a lot more of a heavier meditation. It's like pranayama, kundalini, and that actually woke up something else in me, which you could always see it. But that's when I started feeling the land. I could start feeling other things. So the design went up another level for me, and the visuals and the geometric patterns were a lot more easier because, like, I was in um, my second wife broken up now but um we're in turkey and, and she's there talking turkish to my family all the time and i don't have no idea what they're saying so i'm like oh guys i'm going to bed but i was just meditating the whole time and it was like it was like it was weird it's like a broke through and then you could see all these visions and images and you learn how to actually see things differently you know what i mean so that's actually been really beneficial for design is meditation and getting into those deep um deep states of meditation where you can actually see other things and see other and you can sort of that's just what i'm saying that's where the feeling comes from so i think it's what they talk about in bench i don't study bench way but i think that's what they're actually talking about so um yeah it's, it's, it's a really cool cool ways and you sort of start seeing in those images all those i don't know what even when your pineal breaks or whatever whatever happens um you're seeing these shapes and images and and stuff that you don't haven't seen before but you can actually translate that back into a design so it's actually pretty cool bringing spirituality back into landscaping. So that's something that I've been really involved in. And we like to, sometimes I like to leave hidden messages in the designs, um, which is pretty cool. 
uh, sometimes um, they, people get it. And I was like, wow, they actually understood that that concept, and that was pretty what, pretty heavy. What sort of what sort of messages you made? Oh, it's just um, with geometry, there's, there's there's hidden meanings and symbols that flow through all cultures. So it, it's hiding them in, in plain sight, but it's hard for people to recognize. They see it. It's like when you go, you go, maybe you might go to the Vatican, you might go somewhere else, and you might see something. You go, oh man, that architecture looks really good, but you don't really understand that there's actually a reason why they built it. There's the, you know, so it's tapping into something else that is that is more than just what you see. You know what I mean? So there's 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 other things you can play with and have fun with uh, as a designer. I think that's. That's sort of where I guess, you know, I think things will end up in the next 10 years. It's really starting playing with, you know, deeper into that and having more meaning and purpose, like saying, hey, look, we did this and now this space means this and there's actual meaning behind there and, and this is what this means and there's a purpose here and, and we, we like to go sit on here because this land feels best. You know, so it's it, it, there's more of a creative element when you can do those things or when you can tap into that and we can all do it. That's the crazy thing. We can all do it, but... It takes a lot of work to get to those 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 points, but yeah, we all have that that talent, and we all can do that. It's just it's just really you know, opening yourself up and being vulnerable and just yeah, surrendering and just going yeah, well, whatever, man, let's let's do this. And and you start knowing who you are. You're knowing who you are, and you're comfortable with who you are. And you just go, man, this is me, and this is what I do, and this is how we do it. You know, you just you're free. Um, it's kind of like when I say like, you know, when you tell clients the truth and like i don't think i've told a lie in the last year and a half it's brilliant not to a partner to anyone you know it's like it's liberating you know it's like the best thing you've ever done like not even a white lie and even if you don't tell someone that someone needs to tell them you tell them that oh my god it's like the best feeling it's like you're free there's no there's no there's no guilt there's no nothing so it's all about i guess how you feel what you're thinking what you feel what you how you're feeling well actually it's really about Meditation is not about meditation. Meditation is being aware consciously of all the thoughts that you're thinking and then how is that actually changing your emotional state and then how are you acting because of that? You know, am I in a shitty mood? Am I grumpy? You know, and why is that? Most people, most people don't know why they're grumpy. I'm just grumpy because, I don't know, wake up like that. But why are you grumpy? You know, why are you upset? Why are you not having a good day? Actually, you know, when I learned this one, um, I was actually through business coaching they were interviewing maurice he was like the forbes it was like like forbes but for australia like forbes fastest 100 but for australia and it was really interesting because i'm saying my question to him was like maurice you know what do you do when you have a bad day in business he goes alistair we don't have bad days in business we have bad minutes and as soon as i understood that i'm like wow he changes his emotional state in minutes so now you need to have a bad day or a day where you just don't get much done and you're like because you're not really feeling 100 or whatever but they just like changes their emotional state in minutes and then i was like oh you get it now it's like that's how it becomes exponential because most people are up and down and up and every weekend they come up and they're here and they feel guilty for feeling good and they come back but these guys you know they live in exponential sort of happiness of bliss you know it just keeps going up and 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 they're just like loving life you know that's that's where they're at and so they can just be switched on tuned on and tapped in and business you know they can just be be present they can be there for their family their staff you know and then they've got more energy because nothing holding them back you know there's no, there's no less negative feelings than most so that's i think that's why most most people, once they figure that out, that's how they really succeed in life and business. Yeah, I touched on that briefly with uh, John Hall from Cactus Country. Um, he's, I spoke to him about meditation. Um, and like we, he and I are kind of similar in the fact that the one thing that we do well is uh, realise, like you said, when you're having a bad day and, and why that is. And then you just sort of, you can understand there's no point carrying on like that. Just realise what it is get over it, change, yeah. whatever it has, has to change. And then, uh, yeah, because yeah, you don't want to be getting grumpy at staff when they've, they've done nothing wrong at something else. So you're better off just sort of, yeah, be aware that it's happening so then you can control it. And then, uh, yeah, and that goes back to that uh, Morris who said you have bad minutes. So you don't need to have a whole bad day just because something happens in the morning. You just, yeah, just move on from it. And look, if you can't change, you can't pivot, then just tell people, look, 
I'm not in the best mood today. Like, I apologize in advance. And they go, oh, yeah, I understand. Thanks for that. All right, cool. I'm more tolerant. I'm more understanding now. So, you know, so being aware of how, you, how you're feeling, you know, and, and then letting people know, hey, look, I'm, I'm not having the best day at the moment, you know, so let's do this, but it's going to be, could be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but you, your life's got to go on. You can't not not go to work because you're not having a good day, you know. Yeah. Uh, I saw that you are a member of the Queensland Landscapers Association as well. Do they have much, uh, what, what sort of role do they play in helping out the industry? Do they do any advertising about pushing for structural landscaping licence or anything like that? Uh, yes, working with them a bit. Uh, uh, we're trying to change the, the licensing class for, because it hasn't been changed in QBC for um, to just the 90s. So it's a very broad scope. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's a hard one because we used to build like pool house structures and really complex structures. And we have to actually go in, in writing to the QPCC and ask, are we allowed to build this on this license? We need written permission because you're, 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 you haven't changed your, your, the licensing class or updated it. In, and they know they're aware of it, but you know, in government things take a long time to change. And I don't think anything's changed. So. You know, they they are lobbying. They are doing good work. You know, they're, they're they're trying to do things, but it's so frustrating. You know, obviously working sometimes with government, and you know, I'm not trying to. You know, the people work there are great, but obviously there's a lot more red tape, and it's not not the people's fault. It's the systems and structures that the, the government have have put in that that ties these people's uh, hands. But um, but yeah, with I mean, it's not the biggest thing. There's ways around it, and you just got to got to look at you know, well, how do we how do we do this? You know, we can't build this. Well, let's go talk to QBCC and ask them, are they, are they happy for us to build this under a license class? You know, so there are those gray areas and you have to ask the question um, and just follow the process, basically. Yep. Um, do you do any designs outside of Queensland? Like remotely or anything? Uh, like? No, we, we, we've been asked and um, we get asked to do commercial a lot and, it just ne has never interested me. Um, but I think I think there's so much work here, and and you have to ask yourself why do you want to expand. Is it going to make your life better by having more work and working over there? And you know, is it just feeding the ego? You know, like hey, look at me, I'm, we're big and we're 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 the biggest company in in, in Australia, and, and we're doing this, and we did this four million dollar project. It doesn't matter. Just just it's about the people you work, with, the clients you work with, the staff that you have. And, and having fun with it, you know, that's that's it. And in a day, you, you, your kids are going to school, you got a roof over your head, I've got a couple of surfboards, I'm, I'm a happy man. You know, you don't need much. So it's about, you know, what is necessary and, and why you're doing it. So if you can answer the why, why do you need to be big or why do you need to be large or why do you need to work interstate? You know, if you can't answer that well, then I think, well, then why do it? Yeah. All right, I think one of the fun things would be working with different plant palette because when I see the design you do, I love like tropical is my that's my jam. I absolutely love it. So that's why I love your design so much because there's so many different plants that you can use there compared to what we can in Victoria. So I reckon that would be yeah. something that would be a, a reason if you wanted to push your um, or challenge yourself in that regard. But um, so where does all of your work come from? Is it do you do a lot of advertising or is it a lot of it all just referrals? Uh, a lot of referrals, Google uh, reviews are, are been been amazing. We, you know, we've got you know not just having a five star review, but having like a page where clients written something about us has really really helped. Um, actually, got a first bad review the other day. Actually, it's like, and it was in a, in a point where I was having a bad day, and and I was saying to the client, like, so it's like they're they're saying like, you know, you know, this is. Price has gone up. No price has gone up. So I'm like, mate, the actual price. He wanted a discount. I'm like, he wants to lower our margins. And that was like already, you know, pissing me off, you know. And um, and I said, mate, look, it's gone up, not down, and we can't I can't reduce my margins. Uh, and and he got angry, and I got angry, and I said, oh, good luck, Chuck. And it was a first bad review. I'm like, oh, mate, because I knew I knew I was having a bad. I knew I shouldn't have answered that phone call, or, or what I should have done in retrospect. I should have let him know that I'm having a bad day, you know, look, or I'm not feeling the best at the moment, you know, so, you know, in, in thing of hindsight, you know, definitely I should have, um, you know, done better, but that's, that's it. So, you know, there is no, there is no mistakes, only lessons in life and we learn by them, but 
Google reviews are amazing, you know, and, and again, if you're asking for, you know, ask for reviews and, and let, let them, let them have it, you know, like just, if you want to happy, I'm happy, just give it to us, you know, like, but, and it's really important as well is actually say, could you give us a re review because this, this, and this, it really helps our business. They did a study, which was really interesting. Uh, I think it was just, you know, people lining up for a photocopy to do some photocopies and some people wanted to cut in line. And the people that would actually use the word because people would actually, I think it was 50% more would actually say, yes, you can cut in because they use the word because. So giving the reason why, why we need to do, hey, look, I've got to jump in here because I've got to pick up my kids. Can you help me out? You know, those, those things as well. So can you, can you give me a review? Because uh, it really helps our business and the guys would love it. You know, the guys would, would really appreciate you saying a couple of kind words of how hard they work on this project. You know, you know, and that, that the other subcontractor, Tyler, was here, you know, three months and, like, you know, we're doing jobs. We got one guy, Sam Gardner, our subcontractor. Like this guy is amazing. He's probably one of the best mosaic uh, artists. Like he will pull apart a bizarre tile and then put it back together. But then you come and walk in and see this pool. The whole thing starts moving like art and it's tripping you out. You know, you're like, you know, how do you do this? You know, like he's just, again, he sees things differently. And then he just does it absolutely perfectly. Perfect, you know, but you know, it's like it's frustrating because it's like a month job, but it's taken six months. You know what I mean? Because he's he's that. But there's a market for that. There is there is art in landscape, and you can create this beauty in a different degree. And um, you know, I think that's another another next level um, that you know you can give to clients when you're actually creating artwork in a landscaping and creating something of high value that will appreciate in value over time. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that project actually because I saw a brief snippet of it on your Instagram where you were testing the water feature. So is that water feature, is that flowing downstairs or is that part of the, is that just a separate uh, water feature? That's, yeah, I've been asked that a few times. So that's a separate water feature and the stairs are dry to the right. right. The main entrance is there, but it looks like the stairs lead up to that point there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a little, little clever design illusion. So that's a um, yeah, beautiful, actually when we were, Designing that, we walk in the client's house and um, he's got one of the probably most beautiful, famous Aboriginal um, artworks in his house. It's huge. And so what we just thought, we thought, okay, let's take this art and we'll get Bizarre to actually make it up in Italy and like have, have that as an inspiration. So we had an old tool there and we go, okay, let's turn and convert that into an infinity pool, break it and bust it. And then we're going to put this bizarre artwork in this beautiful Aboriginal pat pattern, or um, and that and it's just it's going to be one of a kind. You know, this this project's going to be great, and the client is amazing. You know, like he's like, yeah, it's coming out functions and parties there for your clients and showcase it. And you know, it's really good when you get like um, people invested in in yourself, your team, your brand. And you know, like it was funny we we went it was like a four hundred thousand dollar contract or something like that. And, we signed the contract and we ended up didn't leave their place till about three o'clock that night, you know, in the morning, you know, we ended up having a great time with them. You know, it's just it's so so it's those so fun experiences when you can actually you know, separate the personal and the business as well. And and it's just good to have, you know, good value people like that as well. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, I can't wait to see that project. Um I also saw it might have been a year or two ago you did a project it might have must have been a collaboration that uh Centenary Landscape Supplies, where he did a chuck the plunge pool in there, and um, and Jason Hodges oh, came along, put yeah. the turf down. So what was that about? Because so they got a, they a landscape supply yard with a, a plunge pool at the front of the the yard. Yeah, so um, they, they approached us. We we love doing um, display gardens and international gardens and stuff like that. It be, it's a little passion for us. We um, uh, yeah, we, we did that one because they've seen us do a lot many before. It was it was because it's it's hard because we don't have much here. We don't have Chelsea, you know. We don't. I mean, the Melbourne Melbourne Garden Show, and, and we don't we don't really have that here. We had one, and uh, it was really good. We we got a goal for that one. It's judged on international gardens um, standards or criteria, so that was really good. So for us to have a play, you know, we get these little ones where the supplier might talk to us and Punji talk to us. So we go, oh, we'll come up with a design, and and you go, you guys put the tool in, we'll do the landscape design, and 
you know, just work with our suppliers and that as well. So, you know, we used to do the same thing with um, Pool and Spa Show. And uh, I was like, oh, I really want to do something, you know, big and, and cool and collected, you know. So and I talked to the guy and, like, normally you pay a lot of money for, like, a, a small thing, you know. It's like nine grand or something. So I'm like, look, if I build something, if we build something really cool here, would you give us the space? So he ended up giving us, like, 400 square meters and paid us money for it too. But it ended up, you know, cost us 120. But it was just something cool to to go and have a, you know, a little play with the guys. And you sort of, you know, that one was really cool. We actually had an Infinity Edge pool that we built off-site in just nine days. And we built it out of uh, waffle pots, actually, uh, which is really cool because Baron Edge Showgrounds in, in, um, at the Echo in Brisbane, it has a very uh, weak suspended floor. So we had to limit the, the weight ratio. So we basically had to look at a way of building a pool and tiling it and putting mosaics all over it and having a structure so like working with different suppliers and you could talk to them and hey would you sponsor us for this hey would you sponsor us for this we're doing this and it's just calling up these suppliers and going you know what we'll, we'll do that you know we like that you're having to go and and we'll do it so you start working out how you can sort of build that with that sort of structure so you you come in there and you and i think in three days we build this massive pool this construction this landscape you know, and it's just it's just fun having those little little events and and creating those business opportunities. Uh, you know that that can that can keep going for a long time. And then you start getting calls from like the home show once you there. They want you to do this. And it's like, well, I can only afford like one of these a year. Uh, maybe no, you know, because they do cost you money, and yeah. you probably don't get really the returns for what you really put out. Um, there's other ways you can just market. Do it, but you've got to have fun. If you love what you're doing, you want to practice those little things and those little show gardens, then yeah, then there's, there's ways and means that you can do it. But yeah, you have to go, well, you know, you have to run a business too, and you have to go, well, how much is this going to cost us? You know, without the sponsorship, then you would say if you went to Chelsea Garden Show and you get a million dollars of sponsorship, you actually go build something pretty cool. Um, so yeah, without that investment, without that um, sponsorship, it's, it's hard to go and have those uh, little play events like. But it's great when, you know, Centenary Landscapes are a great supplier up here in Brisbane. Um, we've been using them for the 19 years we've been in business. And, um, yeah, it's good when you, you sort of have those partnerships with, with people and you can sort of promote everyone's business and then everyone sort of wins and, and people can actually go and clients can go see a little uh, display or a landscape. I mean, it's really important. We've always, I've always had a night nursery since I've been that 20, I think. Um, I've always loved growing plants. So I think the place we rented, it obviously it was 800 square meters and um, within about a month, I had the whole thing um, as it converted to a nursery. And then, then the, the owner or the landlord came in, <laughs> he starts laughing. I'm um, saying, so, yeah, you legally have to pay for the water too. And he was just pissing himself off. He didn't really care because he's going to develop the block. But, um, but he was just, oh, uh, yeah, Alistair, you're just like a next level. So. Um, that was always good, you know, always always growing plants and always had a nursery. It's, it's nothing big, but it's good enough for our clients. You know, you probably do a couple of hundred thousand in, in, in plants a year, you know, but it's it's, it's benefit, beneficial, especially when you're designing. So you're designing, you just walk out, and you go, oh, yeah, we can use this, this, and this. Sometimes you have mental blocks of plants, you know, you can't always think, you know, so you go out and you go, oh, this combination will work well with this, let's do this, let's try this. You know, as you said about Queensland, you know, there is, you can use a, a much more variety of plants with a subtropical climate. And um, that's really good. We do have a dry spell between sort of September and December. So it's about the only time you need to irrigate. But, um, but other than that, you've just got to replicate what those conditions are. I mean, plants are like humans in a way. We need the right amount of good food, good water, you know, the right amount of sun. You can do that by design and, uh, you know, a bit of love. So, that's that's all you need to do with plants and understand what plants need and like what we need. And it's kind of like when you know we get sick, we you know disease will come in. It's like when the plants get sick, then disease will come in. Everything's trying to bring us back to the ground by you know the end of it. You know it's, that's the cycle of life. You know, so you know if you don't if your plants aren't healthy, then they're going to get disease. They're going to get pests. So it's about really creating that that. Uh, that's why you come up around with with soils in, in the base and. And, and your fertilizers and all that stuff, you can't shortcut that stuff because it shows. You know, you come back a year later, you might as well like about landscaping is that you can walk into a place and 
you walk out of a project and it looks good, but you come back two years later, it's better. Come back five years later, and you start to see the genius of the planting plan. Because if you look at a criteria, if you're going to judge the landscaping, even the house, including the house, I would say that the planting design accounts for 30% of the criteria for judging. That's the cheapest part of the build for anyone. Plants, land, soft landscaping. But it is where the value is. The landscaping makes the house, the plants make the house. And that gift creates the feeling because that is the what? The living organism. That is that thing that we're creating that beauty, you know, when you go to nature. And what I love about nature is it does it perfectly. There are no, there are no gardens. There is no weeds. You've you got a rainforest, you know, it's just, it takes care of itself. So you look at nature and go, well, how do I replicate that in the landscape? And nature does it so well, you know, and, and I still look at it, it doesn't quite look, but it looks damn good, but nature still does it better than us, you know? So, you know, that's why you still, you know, that's why you got nature, you love it, you know, you see it and it's all its beauty. So if you can replicate that and do that, I'd love to, I'd love to sort of replicate nature in someone's backyard. I think it would be the ultimate, but you don't really have the, um, the size and space and the box are getting smaller and smaller. So it's sort of a bit hard to put a natural rainforest in the backyard these days. So yeah. we do our best. And that's, that's developed over a fair, over just a couple of years as well, the old rainforest. So you can't quite replicate that in, in five or 10. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's a long time to build that ecosystem. So and when you create that, you don't need to mulch, you don't need to weed, you don't need to do anything. So your planning plan makes a big difference on in any landscape or any design, you know, it's, it's so crucial to always getting that, those combinations, those elements, everything going perfectly into each other. So there's almost, in some cases, you don't need much maintenance at all um, by by designing, you know, in a way. So that's a beautiful thing about uh, working up in, in Brisbane is that you can play with those structures. I and mean, I still love the stuff you guys do down there, I love the forms and the shapes, and we still have that play here too. Obviously, just different species of plants sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. Then, what's coming up uh, next year for Everscapes? Is there anything exciting in the pipeline? Um, sort of in a, in a stage now where I'm just like looking at what I want to do. I, I definitely want to um, give back more to the, to the employees and workers that have been with us a long time. So, looking at business opportunities for them uh, in the in the company. So. Uh, where, you know, I might be more involved just in, in some bigger design uh, work and not so much in construction, so I'm focusing on that. Uh, I really want to go do some work. I grew up, in, uh, when, I was, when I was a boy, we grew up in the country and then my parents did some volunteering work in the Pacific Islands. So when I was in 14, 15, I was um, walking around barefoot between Fiji and Hawaii on a coral atoll. Now, these islands are the first to go go under um, by, uh, they are going out. So I really want to go do some work in, in the islands. And it was one of my meditations, I come up with this great um, idea of trapping and, and building the sand and, and helping these islands. And it's not, it's not those islands, it's about 350,000 islands in the Pacific that could benefit from this. So that's really what I want to start doing in the next sort of five to 10 years is, is getting back to the islands and helping out um, where we can, you know, by building these cheaper infrastructure projects, as well as a few resorts to just have a bit of fun and play and create a little community of, um, you know, of like-minded people that like to surf and play and wake up on a beach in a lagoon every day. That sounds horrible. <laughs> sounds horrible, right? <laughs> <All delicious. laughs> yeah. Well, Alistair, thank you very much for your time today. Really All appreciate right, you man. coming on it. Yeah, I've got no doubt that people, other people were getting value out of your chat because I certainly did as I was listening. So thank you very much for that. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it, man. Great to, great to spend the time with you today. Cheers, mate.